Hello, my name is Jason Fogelsmonger. For the past 10 weeks, I have been researching anaerobic digestion under Dr. Anna Martin Riles with Kelsey Vaught and Ashley Wilson in the Department of Agriculture and Biological Engineering at the University of Florida. I have received this opportunity through the USDA REEU program to focus on circularity and digitalization of future agri-food systems. Our work is focused on food waste and the potential opportunities for improvement. In 2012, it was reported that 40% of food produced was not eating, and most of that ended up in landfills. Instead of ending up in landfills, those nutrients could be potentially captured. Now, how could we even begin to tackle such a widespread issue? The idea that we were exploring is anaerobic digestion. We were wondering if the anaerobic digestion could be used effectively to recycle nutrients from food waste in controlled environment agriculture, specifically greenhouse and hydroponic systems that grow lettuce. But what would this look like? Here, I have an overall view of our research. The controlled environment agriculture is where the food waste comes from, and in our case, it is where the, our lettuce is grown. That lettuce waste, consisting of mostly carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, is then added into the anaerobic digester. Through anaerobic digestion, microbes will break down the organic material and convert it into ammonia while releasing methane and carbon dioxide. That methane and carbon dioxide can then be used for energy production. Now, the effluent contains nitrogen in an inorganic form, which is inaccessible for plants. As a result, we put that effluent through aerobic nitrification to convert the ammonia into nitrates. Carbon dioxide is also a product of this process. Finally, we put that mixture through a filter to remove any solids that are remaining, like microbes, viruses, or any other organic matter. Now that the nitrogen has been recovered and converted into a form suitable for plants, it can be applied onto the plants, allowing for the full circularity of the nitrogen. For our experiment, we were not feeding the recycled concentrate from the filtration back into the digester, but that can be another potential way to limit any waste streams out of the process. To track the efficiency of the digester, we took multiple measurements throughout its operation. We ran these tests on the lettuce waste which we feed the digester, the slurry that is sampled while the digester is still mixing, and the effluent that was removed from the reactor after the solids settled to the bottom. One test I ran over the summer is the total ammonia nitrogen test, which measures the amount of ammonia in the sample. This is important to track because the ammonia that is being removed in that effluent is being put through aerobic nitrification and is being converted to nitrates. Also. Comparing the amount of ammonia being put in compared to the effluent shows the work of the anaerobic digester. Another test I ran on the samples was a pH test using a pH probe. We monitored the slurry closely because it mirrors the conditions inside the digester during normal conditions. One of the intermediate steps in the anaerobic digestion process produces an acid. If those acids build up, the pH of the digester lowers which can hinder methanogens at the final stage of anaerobic digestion and cause failure. Now, one of my favorite tests to run was the solids test. Here, I added samples into small crucibles and heated them to 105 degrees Celsius to remove water from the samples. What was left in the crucible is considered the total solids in the sample. Then, I heated that sample to 550 degrees Celsius, which leaves any non-organic material. The organic material that burned off in the 550 degree oven are considered the volatile solids in the sample. What is interesting about the volatile solids is that they contain the material that can be digested by the anaerobes. Through some calculations, we can determine how much organic material was added versus how much was digested. With those two values, we can calculate how much of the total volatile solids was digested. That can also show us how efficient the digester is. For our digester, about 70% of the volatile solids were digested. Garcia Pena et al. in 2011 found that their digester of fruit and vegetable waste performed at 65% of the volatile solids removed. One of the ways to improve the percentage of the volatile solids converted to biogas is to look at the carbon to nitrogen ratio of the feed. Lettuce waste has about an 8 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio, whereas it has been found that a 25 to 1 ratio in a mesophilic digester is the most productive. One potential way to increase our carbon to nitrogen ratio is with co-digestion, where you add material with a higher carbon to nitrogen ratio that could balance out the lettuce, but this also has not been largely explored at this moment. Also, as mentioned before, a stable pH around 7 can also be valuable to volatile solids removal. One of the last tests that I've been running on the samples is the chemical oxygen demand. Simply put, it is another way to measure the organics in the sample, similar to volatile solids. As such, we can predict how much organic material has been digested into biogas with an equation. While we can predict the methane yield, we can also use a tip meter to track the volume of biogas coming out of the reactor. 
Using the ratio of carbon dioxide to methane found in a biogas sample from October, we calculated the actual methane yield to be 360.02 milligrams of methane per gram of volatile solids added, sitting at around 60% of the total biogas volume. With all the information gathered from the tests, we can begin to look at the overall performance of the digester. One way to look at this is a mass balance, and here I looked specifically at carbon. There was a total of 1,300.59 grams of carbon available over the course of the six-month period. 39% of that turned into methane, while 24% was carbon dioxide. 8% was left in the digester, and the leftover 27% was either removed in the effluent or lost in calculations or errors in testing. After looking at all of the data, I can say that anaerobic digestion can be used to recover nutrients from leftover food waste, and those nutrients can be used in controlled agriculture environments. While we haven't fully finished the growth tests in the aquaponic and greenhouse systems, the plants utilizing the water from the digester grew similarly to those using the controlled nutrient water, which shows potential for circularity throughout the whole system. I didn't just get to see this smaller scale reactor, I was able to actually see two larger scale reactors too. One was at Alliance Dairy Farm, where they were feeding their digester with cow manure. They captured the biogas and sold it away to be used for power, and the effluent was used to grow some of their feed for the cows. The other digester was at the South Cross Bayou Advanced Water Reclamation Facility. While they had the digesters, they were still in the early stages of putting up sensors to fully track the biogas produced from their system. Through reading literature and looking at our results, I thought of a couple paths that we could look at in the future. The most interesting to me is the potential applications in space. Some nutrients that are found on Earth are not abundant in space, so focusing on the circularity that an anaerobic digester can bring could potentially bring lots of value and sustainability in space. Another thing to explore in the future is what other things can be fed to the digester. While we were using lettuce, I haven't seen much more on processed foods. And kind of building off of that, where could anaerobic digestion be seen in more real-world examples, both on the smaller and larger scales? Being part of the USDA REEU program this summer at the University of Florida has been a huge growth experience for me. I went in hoping to gain a basic understanding of the research process, but through this experience I have been totally immersed. For that, I'd like to thank Dr. Anna Martin-Riles, Kelsey Vaught, Ashley Wilson, and the rest of their team for helping me feel welcome and for answering any questions that I had. On top of that, I would like to thank Dr. Zinette Boz and the rest of the professors that helped with this program by organizing everything and teaching us valuable lessons that we can bring into our research. I would also like to thank the USDA for funding this experience and allowing me to explore my interests. Finally, I would like to thank the SURF program and the University of Florida for allowing me to be part of the campus this summer. This has been one of the best summers and I'm really looking forward to continue my career as a researcher.